Yep, is it? But folks, what I'm giving you is life. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. And listen, you cannot have a resurrection in your life until you go to the place of death. You've got to go to the place of death in your own life to where you surrender your will. You surrender your desires. You surrender everything that is me, 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 me. It's true. Oh, let me tell you what. When I first started out, you just called me up with a problem. I'd give you an answer. I knew it all. I got degrees. I got papers on the wall in the desk. I tell you how to do it, Darlene. You called me up with a problem. I tell you a, a spiritual religious answer. I can fix it. And from 1985 up to 2013, I have figured out one thing. 2014. I have figured out one thing. Don't ask me. Because I don't know. About the time of what? Amen. About the time. About the time I think I got this thing all figured out. God changes the rules. I have learned that He can do what He wants to do. And that He's going to do it regardless of how much I want Him to do something else. He's going to do it regardless. I'm His child. I've got, you know what? One of the biggest problems that, that Christians have is the sovereignty of God. Did you know that God has already made His mind up about everything? You can't change God's mind. All you can do is come to the place of death, get on your knees, and find yourself conforming to His will. That's all you can do. All you can do is come to the place of Christ. Some, some people in the, in the charismatic Pentecostal world that I come from, we think that we can change God's mind about something. Huh. I used to think that. I thought if I quoted enough Scriptures... And I posted enough of them, Kenneth, on the refrigerator. And I memorized enough of them that somehow another God would change His mind and move for me. But what I have found out that I have to come to the place of death. I have to come to the place of Calvary. And I have to say, not my will, Lord, but Your will. You have to pray what Christ prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. Well, I'm telling you, and I don't help you. It'll help you. It'll help you be a child of God tonight if you'll say, Lord, not my will, but Your will be done. I'm going to stand fast in the liberty that You saved me with and I'm going to allow You to work in my life and move in my life and, and change me. I, I used to read them old bumper stickers all the time. I said, prayer changes things. Let me tell you what prayer really changes. Prayer changes me. Prayer changes my attitude about things. Prayer helps me. Prayer helps me figure out that, that what the Lord is doing in my life and how that He wants to bless me, but I've got to come on His terms, not my terms. I can't live my life in rebellion before God and expect there to be the blessing in my life. I've got to come to Him. I've got to come to the cross. I've got to come to the foot of Calvary. And I've got to say, Lord, I'm willing to let You do what You want to do. I want to be blessed in my life. And sometimes surgery hurts. Yeah. Sometimes God takes the big knife. And He says, Ah, right, this is what's in your life. And I'm fixing to take it out. And sometimes it's an idol. Sometimes it's something you don't want to account. Sometimes you enjoy it too much. But you come to that place where you mean business with the Lord. See, we all struggle. Folks, we struggle. We struggle with things. I'm telling you, I still do. I struggle. I struggle with stuff. Stuff I'm not telling you about. 
But I struggle with stuff. We all we all battle stuff in and out. But what I have learned to do is come to the foot of the old rugged cross, same place He saved me. And sometimes the Lord says, all right, if you give it to me, this is going to hurt, but this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to fix it. You see, God's into fixing things. Did you, how many of y'all know that the Lord loves you? Yes, yes. Everybody in this whole place, God loves you. How many of you in here know that God wants to do you harm? Oh, I saw the hands just about go up. I'm glad you was listening. I was fixing to have a, a casting out session going on here. I saw the shoulders jerking and go back there. You couldn't get them low enough, could you? You're like, I did not nearly do that. That's dirty, Craig. <laughs> Especially this section here, I saw a jerking going on over here. A couple over here. I saw Mike almost stand up back there. He didn't. How many times did you say? How many times? How many times? How many times? How many times? God is not against you. He's for you. Yes, He is. And sometimes, when you come to the place of death, and you say, Lord, God, I want to follow you. See, this is what Paul talked about in Romans, about struggling. When I want to do right, I can't do right. <coughs> Everybody's there at times. Everybody has a desire to serve the Lord. But then you go out and you do something stupid. And you turn around and you say, why did I do that? Why did I do that? What made me do that? I didn't want to do that. But I done it. Now some of you might say, well, you know, if you just had the willpower, you wouldn't do some of the things you went out and you've done. Well, hallelujah. Glad you're holier than I am. Good luck with that. But the truth is that unless you keep focused on Christ and what He did on the cross, and I'll tell you something, that's really the only message in the Bible. It really truly is. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will call all men unto me. That's how come these past six years I haven't come to you with the prosperity gospel message. Give, 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 give. God bless, 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 bless. God give, give, bless, bless. And you know what? It's true. If you give, if you tithe, if you give, and you live in proof of it. There's a lot of living proofs in here. You cannot outgive God. There's been times that the Lord told me to give Him something, and I didn't want to do it, but I give it to Him anyway, and Lord, He poured out a blessing on me. The last time I went to something and had a wad of cash in my pocket, God snuck up on me. <laughs> I got where I wouldn't go to those Church God missions conferences and get any cash in my pocket because I know what's going to happen. It's always going to happen. They're going to say, we're going to take up uh, offering for pygmies in Rwanda. And God will speak to me and say, give it all, give it all. And I thought to myself, well, Lois and me took off on one of the motorcycles to the prayer conference in February to Tekoa. We're sitting there that night, and my state overseer gets up, and I'm thinking we're safe, we're good to go, nothing wrong, nothing's going to happen here. I had my wad of money in my front pocket for a little vacation and going to the prayer conference too, and I had it rolled up, didn't even know how much I had. I just know I had a bunch rolled up in my pocket, and I got up there, and the state overseer, the first thing he does, jump up on the first night, and he says, I just feel lead in my heart tonight. <laughs> That we are to give a missions offering to the churches that's been torn down by these tornadoes. And God spoke to my heart in the balcony and said, Put it all in, boy, put it all in. <laughs> and I stopped at the store on that gold wing and bought myself a coat with a credit card in it. Well, you should have seen that man looking at me. 
God, how He blesses us. He blesses us. But listen, the message of blessing, the message of prosperity is not the message of the gospel. The message of healing is not the message of the gospel. It is a result of the message of the gospel. The, the message of the mighty baptism with the Holy Ghost and the evidence of speaking in other tongues, which praise God we've had three right here in the past couple of months that's received it. And I glory in it. I praise God for it. I want to see every single one of you filled with the Spirit, speaking in other tongues, gifts of God moving in your life. But folks, that in itself is not the message of the Gospel of Jesus Christ. It will not get anyone saved. It will not get anyone delivered. The message is in Christ and Him crucified and the place of death, burial, and resurrection. It's yeah. that faith that moves God's heart. It's that faith that, that moves you on the inside as the Holy Ghost stirs you and yeah. gifts you and prospers you. John said over there in 1 John, he said, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper even as your soul prospers. He had a condition to it. He said, I want you to prosper, but first of all, your soul's got to prosper on the inside. And some people wonder why they're not in victory. Some people in the church wonder how come they can't seem to have the victory in their life. And listen, there's a whole big difference between being broke and having the victory. I'm broke, but I got the victory. <laughs> you can be slap happy about being a child of God. Amen. Listen, if you walk out in that parking lot tonight and all four tires is flat on your car, I cry. <laughs> <laughs> If you, you're going to blame me? If you, listen. If you walked out in that parking lot tonight and you found out all four tires were slashed by somebody and you could say, thank you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. <coughs> Buddy, God's done something in your life. Yeah. <laughs> huh? I'm, I'm, not, I'm a different daddy than I was even five years ago, ain't I? Yeah. I am I'm different. Tristan got married and got out of my hair. <laughs> my light bill went down. Katie got a job. Even more. <laughs> oh man, I love y'all. You know that. Y'all are my family. Y'all are my family. And I love y'all just enough to tell y'all the truth. You've been hearing me pound on this for six years. Mm -hmm. Same group of people, same old message. But the reason I tell you this over and over is the same reason Paul told these people over and over and over. If you read this New Testament, you, write, you read the epistles that were written by the Apostle Paul, he's telling these people the same thing over and over and over again. He's saying, listen, don't be entangled in religion. Don't be entangled back into what you were one out of. Don't be intact. This is how come I don't have any kind of problem going to any kind of church and any kind of denomination there is and ministry. I'm just as happy to sit back in the pew and watch it all go on as I am to stand up front and do it. Listen, I'm working on getting some rattlesnake churches to go to. My daughters don't want to go to it, but I'm going. We going, Kenneth? But anyway, I am just. I am just as happy. In one place as I am the other. And you know why? You know why? Because I've been made free. I've been made free. I've been made free by the cross. I've been made free by, by Christ and what He did on the cross. I'm not there as a Baptist or I'm not there as a holiness or I'm not there as a, a Church of God Pentecostal or a charismatic. I'm there as a child of God. One has been born again, bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. My sins have been washed away. I don't care if I sing and play. Listen, did you know that's how come I don't care what style of music we do? 
That's how come when you come to a Bruce Weeks family band show, you get all the styles of music piled into one. You like to get a contemporary rock Christian song on bluegrass instruments. The next thing you know, it may be one of the most clinched mountain traditional songs you've ever heard that come from the Stanleys. I mean, we change a whole lot. Do you know why I don't worry so much about style and really don't care that much about what people think? We're going to treat you every which way till you're bound to like one of them. It's all going to Him. And it's what He has done in my life. It's what He has done. When I live out the promise of God and what Christ has provided for me on that cross, then I can stand fast in that freedom. I know who I am in Christ. Listen, that's how come, that's how come you can get the victory over what the devil comes around. I quit worrying about the devil a long time ago even though I know he's around. And even though there's times that He comes and tries to talk to me and make me doubt about things, but I quit worrying about old Slewfoot and old Lucifer a long time ago because I know He's been done and took care of by Christ on the cross. I can walk in Christ. I've got freedom in Him. And listen, when you know that, you can be free. Amen. You can be free. You can be broke and crying like a mice coming out of an empty flower barrel. That's poor. That when the mice come crying out the holes in the flower barrel. Because there's no more flower. That's poor right there, Claire. That's about as poor as you get right there. You can be poor. You can be very poor. And still have Jesus in your heart. Amen. You be broke. Oh, you be broke as a as a as a Fly right in a creek bed. You know what I'm talking about when you try to take that fly rod up a creek and you can't swing a nine foot tall fly rod in a, in a creek and so you break the tip off of it and then it becomes a seven footer and then you try it again and it becomes a five footer and pretty soon you just got one of them little old shorty things a kid uses. You might as well just quit. That's like... One time when we was a kid, 13 of us went camping. I know I got to close and y'all got to go home. I can't stay too long because y'all got to help put these chairs and stuff up. <laughs> when I was a kid, there was 13 of us went camping one time. We had five or six old hound dogs all belonged, two or three of us there. Not, we all went, we, we towed it an aluminum boat five miles on our shoulders. We had a tent. And now we ain't talking about one of these tents like you buy now where it's all one of them that kind of plunges up in the middle. We're talking about a Sears and Roebuck. You know what I'm talking about, Andy. A Sears and Roebuck aluminum pole tent where it took two guys to tote the tent poles and about three to tote the canvas. And none of us, none of us could drive. And we all, we all loaded up the boat Put the tent, all the poles, all took turns carrying that stuff, fussing all the way, got to the lake, had our food, had two Coleman lamps, about three or four of us piled in one of them aluminum boats and floated out there in the middle of that lake about 12 midnight, with those two Coleman lanterns going. And my friend, Tim Burton, had snuck off his granddaddy's bamboo fly rod to go fishing with. No, it gets worse from here. <laughs> About that time, we look up on the bank where the campfire is and we see the dogs ravishing all of our food. They're eating our food. They look like bears have come into the camp. We get out in the middle of the lake. We got one paddle. That's oh it. man! About the time we're fixing to try to row to shore hard and fast as we can because the dogs is chewing up our food, and we're yelling at our friends who's standing along the bank, yelling, "Hey, the dogs are getting the food! The dogs are getting the food! Hey, the dogs are! Hey, you quit that! The dogs are getting our food! They had everything but my bag of chestnuts. I brought. <laughs> and we're camping for three days." Wallace Heron brought a frying pan. 
<laughs> Remember Wallace? Yeah. <laughs> Wallace Heron brought a frying pan. On the way up there, we had walked so far, Wallace looks around and he says, did anybody bring any oil? <laughs> He's like, no, Wallace. <laughs> no. We didn't bring no oil. He said, well, I got a frying pan. So we deducted that you can boil fish. Oh, Lord. <laughs> it was either that or chestnuts. You know, the dogs got all the But out in that boat at midnight, this will make you want to get out of the boat. In that boat, about that time we saw a water moccasin slither up over the edge and over into the boat with us. And a water moccasin is not one of those snakes that sees you and says, Ooh, I'm scared of you. No, he's one of those ones that comes in and says, I'm taking possession of this boat, buddy. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I don't swim that way. <laughs> so, so Tim, in an act of desperation, as two more snakes came over the edge of the boat, and suddenly we had three of them in the floor that thing, Tim gets his grandpa's bamboo fishing rod. And that thing looked like a twisted up pixie stick in about two minutes. We got the snakes out of the boat. A couple of them guys are swimming for the shore. I can't swim. So I'm paddling beats that we broke the paddle, actually. We broke the paddle. You know, when you're that broke and you can still love Jesus, He's done something in your life. Stand with me all the time. <laughs> yes, tonight we need to remember Betty in prayer and we need to remember Vicki McBee. Both of them are going through some real health issues right now. We need to remember them in prayer. Come get me a song, girls. Thank you, Jesus. Let's bow our head and close our eyes all over this place. Amen.